What's up guys? Conrad here with another video and today we're going to be discussing the hot topic of artificial intelligence. Now where is it heading? What can it do? Is it going to take over the world and replace more and more jobs ev eventually making us humans obsolete? Are we living in a sci-fi movie? Well it kind of feel like it. it feels like it sometimes. So AI, in some form or another, has been around for a long time, but only recently has it made itself even more present within the public consciousness. With tools such as ChatGPT, AI art, and deepfakes, which are proving to be very impressive and they're only getting more advanced as time goes on. Now, they can create insane results answers to complicated problems and artwork within a span of just a few seconds. It is so efficient and so it begs the question, why waste time allocating some of these rather technical tasks to humans who are let's say less capable and not as intricate and efficient as AI? Sure we have some incredibly talented people with a natural um, instinct for greatness. However, humans can be lazy, clumsy, and we make mistakes. And um, we need time to think and rest. We are not machines. We are flawed individuals, whilst AI aims to be flawless. Now, an artificial intelligence could possibly code better than the best coder in the world, design beautiful websites, Possibly design real architecture, buildings with more efficiency and accuracy than even the top architect. Now, I'm no expert in these fields, but it's, it's not unfathomable that AI could be a great benefit within these fields. Uh, more so with computers and information technology, but the biggest benefit being that it saves money and time. Now, I can easily see AI taking over with more menial and administrative tasks, answering emails with proficiency. If you see what ChatGPT can do, then I could definitely see something similar being programmed within a company's uh, human resource department, answering customer queries in more human-like form, but with uh, conciseness and the great detail but also being able to communicate and respond to follow-up questions. AI has the, has the ability to be somewhat of a counsellor for people who may need help with more social issues. It's like your very own artificial psychologist, giving out relationship advice that is more to the point without wasting time with meaningless thought experiments and digging into one's past. It can probably charm your girl better than you can with the way it can be creative with its words. Although at this stage, as far as I know, it keeps everything PG. But imagine what an R-rated AI can do with its words or imagery, for that matter. You, as a mere mortal human being, stand no chance. Now, many of you will also know AI can create some beautiful and interesting artwork. But at this stage, I don't think it can really compete with, let's say, a Canaletto painting, which has such great attention to detail and is literally a masterpiece that must have taken so long to complete. Now, if it gets to that point where it'll be able to produce something of that quality within just a few seconds, then I guess we're really in trouble. But when you take a closer look at some of the AI art, you may see some strange glitches or inconsistencies here and there, like additional fingers or strange facial features or details that don't quite make anatomical sense. Can AI write music or songs? Well, in terms of songwriting, no problem. Lyrics, poetry, raps, it's actually a great tool and I suppose could be somewhat convenient for a songwriter looking to churn out some new hit for the charts. Now, can it produce a generic catchy song from scratch? Uh, probably. 
Uh, can it make a symphony or a masterpiece, masterpiece that, is the, that is of the level of Mozart? I don't think so. At least not yet. I have yet to be blown away by AI in that particular department. Now, it can write scripts uh, with a decent level of creativity and with time, it can only get better at it. Now, can it produce something of the level of Tolkien, Tolstoy, Shakespeare? I mean, can the stories made by AI really go that epic? With such high level of emotional complexity, spiritual humanity and truly engaging narratives with compelling and shocking twists and turns? Who knows? Will it replace writers? Well, depending on the project, I can see smaller scale advertising or commercials, for example, utilizing AI as a way of, uh, as a way of being more cost efficient. I mean, it gets the job done with very little effort. A writer may take a few months to write a screenplay or a story, but AI just takes a few seconds. Is, it is isn't unfortunate in a way and kind of messed up how this rapidly growing technology could possibly compete with humans in regards to the more creative tasks. Now, YouTube content Visual imagery for content creators can be made much quicker with just a few prompts rather than having to look for a professional writer or artist that would charge for their services. Now, AI videos and moving visual imagery is also quite interesting. None of the videos are made through animation or filming something with a camera but purely from scratch by artificial intelligence itself. You can see a few of them floating around on YouTube. They're pretty weird, psychedelic and somewhat, somewhat dreamlike. Probably the most accurate depiction of how one would depict a dream to actually look like. It works in a similar way our brain does. It uses a data pool of vast memories together in order to construct imaginary artistic visuals, mixing a bunch of collected imagery together in a, in a cohesive way. So it interprets the world and shows you what it can do with some of the prompts it is given. So it works kind of the same way we interpret our own memories. A lot of randomness, but presenting you with the basic gist of what it is trying to emulate. Kind of like you know, modern art. Basically, it's trippy as hell. If you type in AI video into YouTube, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Now with deepfakes. I don't know if it's really within the same category as AI, but we might as well bring it up. Basically, it's the program that puts a realistic rendering of someone's face and puts it on someone else's face within a full motion video. The face is practically 3D, and it's like a digital, digital mask, you could say. And, um, and these are getting better and better, and so it's getting even harder to tell the difference between what is fake and what is real. Can actors be replaced with this technology? Well, it's already happening to an extent. For example, with the new Indiana Jones film where they have a younger version of Harrison Ford doing some of the action sequences. They already are using this technically with uh, stunt people, understandably so, but it's definitely more of a challenge when you want to get up close and personal with, it, with a character whose face is essentially not real. Um, a lot of us can tell that it is a deep fake, but it's only a matter of time until the technology could be used for more nefarious reasons other than entertainment. If you want to frame someone in a crime, well, deep fakes would probably be the way to do it, especially if it's something like, you know, blurry CCTV, CCTV footage. Uh, and so you would need a way to trace whether someone's face has been digitally modified or not. Can they replace background actors this way? Well, absolutely. 
Just get a 3D scan of someone and now the studios can own that person's likeness and be able to use it as many times as they like without that person ever having to come back to work. Now there are now two now there are full two hour podcasts completely done by by AI taking two real life people for instance Joe Rogan and Donald Trump using their voices but it is a completely artificially generated script which has them talking as if it was a natural conversation it's not actually them not even voice actors pretending to be them and guess what these conversations, these AI conversations, are, in fact, engaging. It doesn't sound like a robot just answering very logical questions with straight answers. There's some nuance, subtleties, and humour. When a conversation sounds like too flawless, it's probably AI. The human element includes little nervous tics, stumbling with some words, not knowing the answer every time. Hesitation, changes in inflections and emotions as the conversation goes on. It's that spontaneity that makes someone less robotic. But bear in mind, some people's natural personality can be quite robotic, you could say. Now, many movies like to depict the possible future of society and what kind, uh, with these kinds of technologies in the more advanced stages. And generally speaking, to have an interesting story, you need to have the worst case scenario played out. In regards to robots, the Terminator, iRobot, Blade Runner, uh, Ex Machina, these are movies about robots living amongst humans in society. Do I actually see something like that happening in reality? Well, a version of that, perhaps. Imagine android girlfriends or boyfriends designed to fulfill your most intimate needs. I think that could be around the corner. Now, two new movies that have AI as the main theme are The Creator, depicting a war between the human race and the forces of artificial intelligence, and also the new Mission Impossible film, where AI is an evil entity, being able to control and manipulate all kinds of technology for its own benefit. So in both cases, it seems that in these kinds of movies, depict, they depict AI as being uh, able to develop, to develop a mind of its own, um, making its own decisions, and so therefore it's, it usually tends to gravitate towards self-interest, which is not too dissimilar to humans, but in our case, a lot of us want to appear, uh, well, we don't like to appear as being selfish. We strive to be more altruistic, but I can see AI being very results oriented in the way it thinks. You want, a problem, you want a product or problem solved? Here it is. I fixed the issue and I answered your questions. There is no morality or ethics to it. It probably won't even comprehend whether its actions are good or evil. Now, let me give you guys a crazy fantasy scenario. Let's say that AI does take over. And when I say take over, I mean really takes over the world and can't be controlled because it's just too damn smart. Outsmarting all humans. Even the people who run the world can't stop it. What then? Are humans going to turn into literal slaves? Totally dependent on the new laws and rules created by the AI in order to keep humanity in a state of helplessness? Can you imagine an AI dictatorship? There is no physical leader, just an entity, which is not tangible. What if they could control the monetary system? I mean, it's mostly electronic. The monetary system is mostly electronic now, so it's not like they won't be able to access everyone's financial data. And then the humans are like, 
what have we created? We were just trying to make the world a better place. And then, of course, the humans start to rebel. And so an all-out war begins between the humans and the machines, trying to destroy any piece of technology, bringing the world back to its original natural state, back to square one. So if AI could potentially take away your job, then it could also potentially take away your sense of identity and you start questioning, what is my purpose on this earth? What function do I serve? If technology can already solve most problems, then what, uh, if technology can already solve most problems, then what problems should I try to fix? Humans strive to fix things or fight for something. So I figured that the only solution is to find things that you're naturally gifted in that isn't necessarily rooted within technology. You need to get out more into the natural world. Disconnect from technology from time to time. I'm not saying you should live off the grid, at least hopefully not yet, but get more in touch with some kind of spirituality if you are so inclined. And try to live beyond the secular ways of the world. And so with that being said, Hopefully you found this video somewhat thought-provoking. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.